Welcome back to another Blender modifier video. In today's video, we are going to be looking over our booleans. So by selecting our default cube that comes when you open up Blender, go into our modifier tab and open up the boolean. Next, see once we do, we have a few options here: intersect, union, and difference. And under difference, which uh, I believe is the defaults, we get an operand type, an object, and our solvers. Now, the way booleans work typically is you take two objects, one with a boolean applied, and it's going to do one of these three things. It's going to either intersect with the object, union to the object, meaning to like become part of it, and difference the object to cut out or to make the same shape but indifferent to what it's applied to. So in order for this to work we are going to need to add in a, another shape. So shift A to add in a cube and we're just going to scale this up just a little bit. Bring this back on our X coordinate. Selecting our default cube again. And under difference, object, we're going to select this cube. Meaning now if we bring our cube up into the object. This isn't going to be showing on the inside because on the inside of our cube, our default cube is gonna cut out what's showing here. And in order to see that, we need to hide our cube. I see in this instance, I have done it backwards. So our big cube here has nothing of, uh, no modifiers on it, but our default cube has a difference of this one. So if we hide the big cube, we can see we're actually cutting out onto the smaller default cube. Uh, but if we'd like to reverse that, just remove that boolean from the default cube and add it into our big cube here with that default cube being selected and go ahead and hide our default cube. And you can see we've taken a big chunk out of it. Uh, so let's just scale this up just a tiny bit, uh, bring this over. So you can see how uh, the difference works. Uh, what we'd like to do though is take a look at the other options here. So our operand type is object and we have two. We have object and collection. Okay, so let's talk about the operand type collection. So with our big cube here, we've got our boolean and we're just gonna add in a bunch of spheres. Uh, so we're just gonna duplicate these and bring these around the cube here. So with all these spheres, we're gonna select them all and press the M key and go to new collection. And we're gonna call these booleans. So now we have our boolean collection here. We hide it, you can see they all go away. So selecting our big cube again, and operand type collection, set the collection to booleans. Now currently set to difference. If we hide our collection now, you can see we've affected that operand type for all of our spheres all at once. What this allows you to do is activate multiple booleans, uh, multiple objects to act as booleans all at once and have the solver options and types of boolean all at once rather than doing it individually, which can take a bit of time. Since if you were to do this individually, individual spheres rather than a collection of spheres, you would have to add one boolean and then add another and then add another and it's just a waste of resource and time. Rather than doing that, you can just simply create a collection and use that as the boolean. And the cool thing is, since this isn't a collection and it's not activated yet, you can still make edits and changes and hide them again and you can see it's taken effect. And that's for the operand type collection. Of course, you can do this as complex or as simple as you like with UV spheres or any uh, custom mesh. Put it in the collection with the M key and then choose your operand collection, set collection, choose your solver, choose if you want difference union or intersect and then simply hide your collection after the fact. And remember when you're rendering out uh, this eye here is just hiding viewport visibility, uh, but if you would want the boolean to show as the holes, you need to turn that off for render mode as well. Of course, applying the boolean will finalize your options there. And our solvers here we can have fast and exact. Now, the way our solvers work is by how accurate you want it to be. Now, luckily, we're just using a cube, which has four faces. So our solver, regardless of being fast or exact, is going to be accurate because there's not a lot of surface area. There's not a lot of detail in the surface of the cube to for our solver to be running these calculations upon. Whether it's fast or exact doesn't really matter in this case because it's a cube. But if you have a very complex shape with lots of different parts of the mesh going all over the place, you know, imagine like a tentacles or attached to a sword, attached to something else, you've got lots of very different uh, detailed parts of the mesh, um, then you would want the solver to be exact, to be as accurate as possible. And under our solver options here, uh, we have self intersection, 
and hole tolerant that when we select hold tolerant it means there are better results when there are holes which is slower to calculate uh, we're not punching a hole straight through this cube we're just taking a chunk out of it so that doesn't really matter but if you're going straight through uh, then you might want to do that if it's not showing accurate results we also have self intersection which allows self intersection in operands um, again this doesn't really matter because we're just using a cube to take a chunk out of the side we can deselect that uh, within our under fast we have an overlap uh, threshold here now by changing this you can see what's going on here the lower this number the more accurate it's going to be you can see as we take this number up it's completely gone and it's just kind of taken a little weird chunk out of here i'll lower that again you can see we've finally actually got the boolean to take a chunk out of the big cube uh, but we kind of got these slopes going down and this is because the solver is being uh, fast with a, a, a relatively high threshold and it's not been exact and accurate. If you want it to be fast but be as accurate as possible, you want this number to be as low as possible, which will take the details to the smallest possible number it can. Now again, this is really for more detailed meshes, not just a uh, flat cube. Uh, but we'll keep that on exact. And so that's for the difference tab. Now if we go to intersect, you can see something's changed immediately. Bring back in our default cube, you can see the part of the big cube that is intersecting with our small cube is what's left behind. That is what intersect is doing. It has taken this intersection of the two objects and keeping that as its own object. Again, same, the exact same settings here. Operand type object or collection, fast and exact solvers, and you can select which one we actually want to affect here. And again, our fast and exact and same exact same options here. Now let's look at uh, union. Union will unify both objects, making them one. Union will unify two objects without having mesh inside of each other. So if we take a look at our x-ray view here, you can see they are unified by attaching each other. And you can probably see something interesting here. If we move this along, you can probably see uh, some some lines here. So that's the difference of just um, that's the difference of using union versus just putting two cubes on top of each other. Uh, because now that we've unified these cubes, now that we've unif unified these cubes, you can see it's actually changed the way our faces work. Our faces have actually split partially into separate into separate faces instead of being one big face up here because it's unified. It is split itself. Using union can give issues like this. Like if we want to do fast, you can see it's really changing how that is working. Of course, fast not being as accurate as exact. But those are the three Boolean options here. We've got intersect again, union, and difference. So that has been it for our Boolean modifier. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.